Hi everybody, I'm Bonjour from Paris. This is episode number 58 of my series of free live stream walking tours of the City of Light, Paris. My name is Corey Fry. If you don't know, I'm a full-time tour guide, live streamer, photographer, etc. And today, as I wait for my live viewers to show up, I can see you arriving now. Hello, Heather Jackson, the first name that I see. Hi, Heather. Today, the title of episode 58 is The Priest, the Hunter, and the Hidden Garden. And we're looking at the entrance of what is essentially one of, in my opinion, one of the best kept secrets of the Marais district. We're in the third arrondissement today. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through that little portal into a, uh, a very secret spot. Some of you may know it, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a discovery for a lot of you. And we are, hello everybody, by the way, I can see my live viewers coming in. I don't wanna ignore you there. Peggy Meechik and Linda Davis, hello. Bonjour from North Carolina, great. I love getting those bonjours from all around the world. Here we go, let's fire up number 58. We're tucked away in the, in the Northern Marais district, um, third arrondissement, and I just wanna give you an idea of the rather unassuming streets, not the fanciest streets that you'll find in Paris, you know, just residential quiet. This is called the Rue Villardouin, and you know, we've got sort of a, a ratty uh, exterior there and a dumpster some work going on down there. So it's not the, the prettiest street that you'll find in the Marais. But let's jump right into the hidden garden part because I think those of you who haven't discovered this yet are really gonna enjoy it. Here we go. Good morning and bonjour to everyone. It's great that you're joining me live again. So let's get to this very hidden garden. One reason that people don't make it into this garden or perhaps are a bit turned off is right away you'll see it says private residence. Uh, but then what it says is uh, the passage of the, the piton, so it means pedestrians can come through, it's authorized during the openings, opening hours of the garden, okay? So even though it says private residence, if this gate is open during the day and the park is open inside, feel free to pop through. You're definitely gonna want to. And then I'll just show you here this residence, the name of it is called the Residence Les Arquebusiers. Look at that symbol, by the way. I want to zoom in on that symbol with the three horns. Keep that symbol in mind because we're going to come across that. So this is a private residence, but when the park is open, we're allowed to pass through. Here we go. Right away, you can see that's good. That's the kind of portal you want to make your way through. Hi, Larry Allen. Hi, Janet Webel. Etta Wessler's here. Welcome to Paris, everybody. It's very quiet. I'm going to try to whisper. It almost feels like being in a church when you're in this park in particular. So we'll take it nice and slow. I'll tell you the name of this park in a moment for those who haven't discovered it here in the Marais district. Paris is a lot greener than people expect. Uh, you just got to know where to find these spaces. This is a public park. Hello, Christina Consolé. I can see your little cuckoo there. Cuckoo back. Right back at you, Christina. So this is entitled The Priest, the Hunter, and the Hidden Garden. And we're starting out with the Hidden Garden part, obviously. I just want to give you some of these gorgeous perspectives. So we'll take it nice and slow here. It's a very bright, sunny 90 degree day Fahrenheit. So I'm cooking a little bit today and it's one of those days where it's so sunny, I can't quite see my screen, but I'm just uh, using muscle memory here to trust that I'm showing you some good compositions. There's the name of this square, this park. And in particular right here, Grand Veneur, is the name that's usually used to describe this area and also a famous building, an old 17th century residence that we can see just beyond here. So keep that in mind, the name Grand Veneur, because I wanted to talk to you about what that name means. Now keep in mind this place, we're in the Marais, which is a real happening district on the weekends. This is a Saturday, this is a sunny, beautiful, warm summer Saturday. And earlier I came through here, I counted literally nine people 
in the entire park. Nine people. So I'm backing us into the corner just so you can get the full effect. Hey, David Dubois, can't wait to tour with you as well, buddy. Thank you. So I hope for some of you this was a discovery. This is one of those parks that the locals don't really want you to know about. So I, as I joked in my announcement on Facebook earlier this week, I said, you're only all allowed to tell 2.5 of your friends. That's the max, because we don't want this place to get too overrun. You're allowed to, to sit and lay out on the grass here. So this time of year, it's become a haven for a few local sunbathers. And I'm gonna back myself into the other corner just to show you, give you the full experience here. Thanks so much for joining me, folks. 150 of you already. If you're new to this series, the idea is if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm gonna bring it to you each week with a free guided tour in real time. Just about as good as being here, almost as good rather. Look at that, so I'm tucked away here in the corner. Again, by rights, you know, all right now, the Luxembourg Garden is packed with people, the Tuileries Garden's packed with people, um, just on and on and on around, all around the city, but look at this, tucked away in the Marais. So we've got, <clears throat> some people call this a hidden rose garden because there are actually quite a bit of rose bushes, um, <clears throat> but there's a lot more than that. I talked to the gardeners and they gave me a bunch of other names of flowers here, but they were in French and I didn't really <laughs> know what the heck that meant. But clearly, I could, for example, I'll show. So predominantly roses, but still plenty of stuff like that. Again, I've admitted repeatedly one of my blind spots is botanical type uh, subjects. So I don't know the names of trees or flowers or any of that business. While we're on the subject though, uh, a couple of the rose bushes here are, are, they have interesting names. I'm gonna show you one a little bit later, but I also wanna mention, you know the actress uh, Catherine Deneuve, very famous um, French actress. Her, she has a rose named after her. In the 1980s, there was a uh, rose, famous, sort of a very well-known successful rose cultivator. And he decided in the 80s to name a rose, a uh, breed of rose, after Catherine Deneuve. And some of the labels aren't here, so I've tried to track down like which rose bushes are that, that breed. Um, they say that it's sort of like a, a salmon rose color. So I don't know. The, la the labels uh, haven't revealed it to me, but there are some Catherine Deneuve roses around here. Oh, let me head this way. We're surrounded by uh, some very old residences, what you refer to as a hotel in France. Um, many of you who have traveled through France, you know that hotel can have the second meaning of a very um, fancy city residence, a, a sort of palatial dwelling for a wealthy family. And that's the case with this architecture, and I'll explain a couple of these buildings in a moment, but let's just meditate on that. Again, as I said earlier, I'm, in my opinion, this is the best kept secret of this section of the Marais district.
there's a church. Do you see that little church steeple? It's built in the 1820s. It's called St. Dennis of the Holy Sacrament. So you can catch little glimpses of it from the southern side of the park. And it's quite lovely. Let's just... Another meditative moment right there. Ah, someone just said, I can't believe how quiet it is. That's why I put the mic close to me so I could essentially whisper in this park. You get a sense that the locals really expect it to be quiet. You know, they want you to be respectful here. While we've got this view, I'm going to switch from my wide angle lens, which we've got now, to my zoom, which, as you know, I'm wont to do occasionally. So, let me do that. what I like is something like that, right? Wow. Wow. All of my painters in the group, go grab a canvas and some brushes. Let's do this. This composition with a street lamp too. I, I tend to take a photo somewhat like this every time I'm here. Wait, no, right there. That's just for Missy Lamb. Shout out to superfan Missy Lamb there. Some of you know what I mean. So I mentioned some of the rose bushes here are technically called Cat Catherine Deneuve uh, bushes, named after the actress. And then here, this is a name from our last episode. Uh, let me try to get in frame there. Can you make that out? Pierre de Ronsard. He was... Um, a 16th century poet that I mentioned in the previous episode called Coffee Colleges and Code Breaking, and there was a bust of him, and there were some rose bushes and some benches along the Rue des Écoles in the Latin Quarter, so hopefully you will uh, be able to see that, and you can recognize that there was a, a rose bush named after the poet Ronsard, and that's what this is. Let me take us out of the park and closer to the architecture. That allows me to get in the shade as well. That's nice. As I said, it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. This building here, the, uh, the Hotel du Grand Veneur, built in the 17th century by an architect and a masonry expert by the name of uh, Vildo. And Vildo started out as a humble uh, mortar factory worker. So he's basically spent all day as an employee uh, crushing big stones into little stones and making mortar. But then he moved up the ranks and uh, in the 17th century became basically the king's head masonry expert and one of the royal architects of the, the court of Louis XIII. So he built this and then later on a gentleman moved in by the name of, uh, he, they called him Le Grand Veneur. And the Grand Veneur, what was that? Well, one way that uh, the royal court would try to entertain themselves and distract themselves, of course, were it was going on these grand hunts, right, where they'd mount their horses and they'd go on a hunt. Well, Louis XV, can you make that out? Would go on these grand hunting expeditions out at Versailles. And the guy who was organizing the hunt was called Le Grand Veneur, uh, the Grand Hunter, or usually that, that term Grand Veneur means the master of the royal hunt. So hopefully you can make that out there. So the guy who was organizing the hunts for Louis XV lived here, and 
I want to zoom in here because hopefully you'll be able to make out right in the center of the balcony, under the center of the balcony is a boar's head. If you can make that out. So obviously that's in, a, in reference to this gentleman. His name was technically the Marquis of Ecquivie, if I'm pronouncing that right, Ecquivie, but we call him Le Grand Veneur, the master of the royal hunt. And so that's some loveliness there. And then if we move over here to this building, there was a priest. Again, the name of this uh, episode, The Priest, the Hunter, and the Hidden Garden. Um, priest lived here by the name of uh, Surat, Abbey Surat. He's mentioned in this text right here. And so he resided here, and he was the uh, Archpriest of Notre Dame uh, here in Paris for a while, so that was a big deal. He was also the General Vicar of St. Denis Basilica, just to the north of Paris. But that made him a target as one of the head priests during something called the Commune. I've mentioned the Commune uh, a few times in this series. 1871, the people of Paris, working class, and the, the, uh, the local militia rose up against the French government, and it turned out to be a very bloody affair. Well, this priest who lived here um, fell victim to something like this. During the commu Commune, they would throw priests in prison, uh, in particular a prison in the 11th arrondissement called uh, the Prison de la Roquette, Prison of the Roquette. Um, and they would line them up here. This is a composite photo uh, to show what would happen. So the, com the communards are on the bottom there with their rifles, and they're lining up the priests in a firing squad situation. So um, the priests we're talking about, Mr. Um, Surat, isn't actually in this photo, I believe, but he fell victim to the communards in 1871 because they weren't too keen on priests back then. But it's beautiful. A beautiful hotel particulier. The dove there, you can see, references the fact that a very religious man was residing in this building. And then let me zoom in. It's a residence today, it seems. And so in the, in the entrance, if you can make this out. Shoot. Hold on. Oh, I can do this. Yeah, there's quite a lovely desk there. Hopefully you can make out a few details, despite the glare. For one more look back over towards St. Denis of the Holy Sacrament, which is that 19th century church right there. This building here of the, the hunter, uh, master of the royal hunt for Louis XV, uh, the architect Vildo that I mentioned, who was the mortar guy, made a name for himself. He would go on to actually be the head masonry uh, supervisor for Volvicomte, if you've heard of that chateau, uh, the chateau that inspired Versailles. And so he worked alongside Le Brun and André Le Nôtre, the great gardener, uh, etc., for Volvicomte, which is personally, in my opinion, the best chateau. And in fact, speaking of Le Nôtre, who would go on to do the Versailles gardens, uh, he designed the original garden that was here, even though this is not it. Mr. Le Nôtre of Versailles fame and whatnot um, would have put the original iteration of a 17th century garden in the space. So there you go. The priest, the hunter, the hidden garden. It's all good, but we're not done yet. So let's say goodbye to the secret space. Let me check the time. I can already predict that I'm running longer than planned. Not too bad. Whew, I'm getting a good sweat on today. Real quick detail here, we're walking through a large residence, again, the Residence des Arcbusiers. These lamps here, as you know, the, the classic street lamps, I mentioned this on a previous episode, how they, this design here with the leaf motif that's going around that you can see that swirls around up the post. It's called an Oudry um, style post. And if I swing this around, it will always 
these posts will always remind you of what arrondissement you're in. So the Roman numeral three here, right there, sorry. I just think that's kind of a fun way to always know which district you're in. If you have a doubt, check the lamp posts. So that's where we came from. And as I back out of this residence, by the way, you can just see how, on this side, how damn well hidden this park is. Okay, so you can see the name of the street here is named after the residence. What is an arquebusier, by the way? Uh, sort of like a musket man. Uh, hundreds of years ago, salut! <laughs> uh, hundreds of years ago, these long barreled rifles came into um, uh, war for, war, warfare in a big way around the world. So these long range, sort of long barreled rifles uh, were run by these, or muskets were run by these, um, fired by these, the, the infantry of Paris. Quite like that view there. And then look, this is the, again this entrance that we talked about. I mentioned at the start of this episode, oops, sorry. I said, remember that logo of the three horns, likely related to this idea of the arquebusier, these uh, long barrel riflemen, musketeers of sorts. So that's a lovely detail. And then I got to back up because I still got the zoom on, but love, love, love this hotel entrance. Are you familiar with this one? Let me pan down a little bit. How lovely is that? It's called the Villa Bon Marché. Pretty high end, I checked the prices. It's an average of five or 600 euros per night. So this place um, must be treating you pretty well. But I gotta zoom in for the lamp posts. There are some details that I just always photograph every time I see them. the level of artistry. Insane. Yeah, Amy uh, Betton or Batan? I can't remember how to pronounce your name, Amy, sorry. Uh, she mentioned it's, those horns look like it's a call to the hunt type of horn for sure. So there's that theme around here. Okay, so if you want to splurge a little bit and come here to the hotel, uh, the Villa Bon Marché, You'll get your own secret garden, essentially, around the corner. Now we're approaching the Boulevard Beaumarché, named after the uh, playwright who was most famous for writing The uh, Marriage of Figaro. He lived in the Marais, so his name pops up quite often. And you can see now it gets busier, <laughs> louder. The exact opposite of where we just were. I want to point this out, I love old street signs. I'm addicted to them. So here we see the modern sign that we talked about, and then look at that beauty. The Rue de Arle, named after a previous residence that was here. I don't know if you can make it out, but at the bottom of the word Arle, it says for, the number 14. That's because the districts were numbered in a different way. Before 1860, when Napoleon III and Osman expanded the city and redid the arrondissements, turned them into 20. Uh, back in the day, that 14 would have likely referred to the third arrondissement today, but back then, sorry, it was 14. And then over here, some of you know and love the invader street artist. This is interesting because the one on the right is legit, and the one on the left is a copy. He has plenty of copycats because he's gotten that big. And so every time on the left here, you see these little uh, sort of Area 51 alien dudes. That's usually not invader, even though it's done in the same mosaic style. This one, however, is legit, if you can make him out. You can get his app, the Invader app. It's called Flash Invader for your phone. And you can use your camera on your phone to scan them in and find out if they're legit or not. And you get points as well. Okay, let me give you, before I wrap up the public version of this episode, I want to give you some food recommendations and basically just talk about amazing food in this area. Uh, so this place is called uh, Neighbors. Neighbors is a tiny little cafe. It's kind of the, one of the, I would say, the, the new trendy hip coffee shops, but that means that the coffee is really good and well brewed. They also do nice breakfasts and brunches and whatnot. And for that reason, let me show you right here. Sorry, I'm trying to prep a photo. Oh, I'll try to do this one handed. 
what they love. I went there for breakfast. They're like, no, we don't have any croissant. I was like, really? You don't have any croissant? That's odd. They said, what we do have, though, are crumpets. Crumpets currently. I put this on my Instagram recently. That's my photo that I took the other day. And it might, for an American, these crumpets, they're very British, might just look like, oh, it's an English muffin, no big deal. But no, it's so far from an English muffin. So come here for the jam and butter and crumpets. They're delicious and nice and soft and warm and gooey inside. And the coffee's good, too. So that's called Neighbors. Note that. On the Boulevard Bon Marché. Oh, I gotta watch my footing. Um, this place is called Grazi. It's Itali Italian. I've eaten here once, it was alright. So if you're into Italian, it's got a fun decor, uh, especially here where you've got the love when the leather armchair thing happens, right? That's grazie. Grazi. I can't. I can't do the Italian R. I'm terrible at it. So grazie, Italian. Here, there's a nice door. Actually. Spoiler alert, I'm going to do a full-on door tour on the Boulevard Marché, uh, Beau Marché rather, uh, one day, because there are so many beauties, but I just want to show you this while I've got the zoom lens on. Sorry, I just got to convince my phone to do what I want. There we go. And then this place, I want to share another amazing meal that I've had and a dessert that you absolutely must try. And I'm not just saying that, that's cliche, right? To say like, oh, you've got to try this. No, I'm not messing around this time. So this place is called Maison Plisson. Delphine Plisson is the owner. It's been open since uh, 2015, so it's a relatively new arrival. And so I went here the other day on a whim and it blew me away because this is what I had. Here are some more of my photos. On the left, it was a stuffed courgette or a stuffed um, zucchini with some really nice uh, multi-grain bread. Let's make that out. Vibrant, colorful, super healthy. It had ricotta and pine nuts and raisins inside. Uh, just really lovely. And then on the right is what I really want you to try. It's their rice pudding. In French, they say riolet. Uh, their rice pudding with these little caramelized nuts and salted caramel um, goodness sprinkled on top, or, or I should say dripped on top. So that is a meal that you should definitely come and have. It is phenomenal and just no matter what you have, get the dessert of the rice pudding with the car caramelized nuts. It's just insane. It's also very large, by the way. So uh, get ready to split it with somebody, share it with a friend. And so you've got two restaurants. It's, it's the same restaurant, Maison Plisson. There's one here, one there, and then one here. Uh, the left one that we just passed is hooked up to a bakery, but this one's hooked up to a gourmet food shop, and that's how we're gonna finish this episode. I want to show you this. I'm going to um, pop the... Bonjour. I want to show you the goat cheese like I've never seen it before. This is a goat cheese covered in dried flowers. Can you make that out? dried flowers and you just eat them. So for you cheese fanatics and particularly for you goat cheese fans, this is in intense. Look at the name, Satinée aux fleurs. Isn't that gorgeous? And then just for a bit of fun, take a look at the others. Comté, this is called Comté, I love that. With a glass of red wine, Comté can't be beat. <laughs> the little kid saying hello. <laughs> Bonjour. Here's the brie. Truffle. They, you know, it's common to put a layer of truffle uh, in the in the brie there. There's a little butcher section. Produce. Bonjour. 
and then let me do this. We go downstairs where it says APC. It's a little gourmet food food store. But I want to switch my lens because it gets very small down there, very cramped. So sorry for the weird view. a little bit blurry on the live stream don't worry because the HD replay will look nice and crisp so look at this gem down here we're in the Maison Plisson and Delphine Plisson the, the, the lady who opened this spent three years non-stop traveling all around France to find good local delicious products and so this is all sourced from local um, producers in various ways, you know, artisanal producers and whatnot. And you really feel like you're in a little cavern. <laughs> Jennifer Warren says, down the delicious rabbit hole. That's a great way to put it, Jennifer. The wine is down there. Cookies, what else do I see? Flavored sodas, artisanal chips tapenades, jams. This is tea and coffee. And what I like too is that they, we can't access it, but this spills out onto a courtyard. That's where the employees of this place go and have their smokes. So again, gourmet food shop down here, upstairs, cheese, meat, produce, bakery, and then also their restaurant called Maison Plisson, where you definitely want to eat the rice pudding. Bonjour. And we'll finish up with the wine back here. A few hundred varieties of wine. Liquors and whatnot. Heather Jackson says her stomach's growling. And I'm going to make my way upstairs, rather, and it's going to wrap up the public version of this tour. There we go. I may have lost connection in there for a little bit, but you all catch it on the replay. Okay, that's me, and I'm gonna wrap up this public episode. If you want to help this project survive and thrive, you can become a Patreon member, and with a small monthly pledge, uh, you can help support this and help me continue to find all these nooks and crannies and share them with you and dig into the history and uh, you'll get a lot of rewards in, in return. So the link for that is in the description of this replay. I'm going to put uh, an HD version up on YouTube and Facebook so keep an eye out for that if any parts were blurry for you live. And uh, for your Patre current Patreon supporters, we are going to do a tour extension right now around the corner. We're going to continue the good times here in the third arrondissement. And I've got a cafe chat as well uh, with one of our own. Her name is Rosalind Tulio. And Rosalind, if you're watching, hello. I'm going to meet you soon in the cafe. And uh, she has never tried escargot. She's never had French snails. So we're going to do that on camera. We're going to talk about uh, Australian slang and uh, whatever else we get up to on the cafe chat. So that is for my Patreon members. And you can go over to our private Facebook group to watch that. And Otherwise, for the rest of you, I will sign off and give you one last look at the Upper Marais District of Paris, Boulevard Beaumarchais. Bon and thank you. Thanks for joining. Have a lovely, lovely day. I'll see my patrons in a few moments in our private group. 
and I'll see you for the next episode next week free live stream tour of the City of Light if you can't bring yourself to Paris I'm gonna bring Paris to you it's my passion it's my job it's my mission it's my reason for getting out of bed in the morning so take care everybody have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you on the next one